Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. And if you have your Bibles with you today, if you'll take them out and turn with me to Romans, the seventh chapter, Romans chapter number seven, would remind you that we have version available. If you have that app on your phone or iPad or electronic device of choice. Uh, it is available, and you'll have the information for all the notes for this morning. Romans chapter 7 is where we're heading. It's great to see you today on this cold day. Y'all going to be thankful for spring? Not sure you heard me. Y'all going to be thankful for spring? Amen. <laughs> we had a little taste of it this week and uh, wetted the whistle, and I'm ready, ready for springtime to come. You know, last week during the altar service, the Lord spoke to my heart as, uh, as we were praying with people, kind of a prophetic word, and it was the word change. I believe change was the word that he wanted me to speak last week uh, over uh, men and women around the altars, and I believe it's a word that God has for us as a congregation. It's a word that God has for us as individuals. You know, we all understand change because as we started uh, yet another year, we have taken time to look back over 2017. Most have done a quick review, kind of a renewal process of looking back over the last year. We've evaluated, we've speculated, and if you're like most Americans, you probably have set some type of a, a New Year's resolution. The problem with resolutions is, have you found they lose momentum? January, you're doing good. I mean, you are really getting with it. They kind of start fading a little bit as February comes in. And by the time March gets here, it's just kind of mush. It's just kind of all over, and you've kind of forgot about it, and you're not keeping up with the resolutions. And I don't know about you, but often that's left me with a place in life where I've just been kind of frustrated and said, you know what, I'm never going to get these things. It never seems like I'm going to get these things whooped in my life. and I'm never going to kind of get the upper hand on them. You know, the truth is, for many people, as they come to the new year, uh, sadly for them, it is a time of disappointment. It's a time of discouragement as they look over their life and they say, you know, yet another year of the same old things that I've always walked through. And many walk their lives leashed uh, to old habits, old issues in their lives, and it seems as though they never quite find the freedom that comes in Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful this morning that we sang that song a few minutes ago, We're No Longer Slaves. The only thing that I'm a slave to is Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen? Jesus has come to set us free from all of the things that has held us in bondage, all the habits, all the old ways, the old way of thinking. He's given us. We are a people of promise. Can you say amen? Amen. We're people of destiny. We're people with a bright future. Our best days are not behind us, but our best days are ahead of us. And I want to tell you today, as people of promise and people of provision, there are great things down the road for us in Jesus Christ. And you know, I would tell you this, often when we think about being leashed to those things, not everything that we can be leashed to is necessarily a sinful thing. But the truth is, no matter what they are, Jesus came that we might have freedom. Can you say amen? amen? You know, for some people, they wrestle with worry and fear and anxieties and lack of discipline. For some people, their hurdle is food. A lot of times at the beginning of the year, many people are heading into times of fasting with their spiritual ambition to break the hold that food has over them. For some of them, it is uh, relationships. For some of them, it's uh, physical lust. It's areas of their life, a lack of control in areas of their life. And you know, the truth is today, really, it really doesn't matter what the area is in our life that's keeping us least. I would declare to you today that it's time for a change. It's time to not carry that thing over. It's time to leave that thing in last year. It's time to leave that thing in our past. And the Bible tells us if any man be a Christ, he is a new creation. Somebody say new. Yeah. 
It's about new. He's a God of the new. He's the God of the second chance. He's the God of the new star. He's the God of the new season. You know, it was God who created the seasons that we live in. It's God who created things new. There's a time when things go dormant. Spring's going to come. Things are going to come back to life. I declare over you today, this is a season in your life for things to come back to life. What you've been trying to wrestle with, what you've been trying to figure out on your own. I declare to you today, it's a new season of change for your life. Look with me, Romans chapter number 7 and verse 15. Romans chapter 7 and verse 15. Paul said, I don't really understand myself. For I want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the thing that I hate. But if I know that I, that what I'm doing is wrong, it shows that I agree that the law is good. So I'm not the one doing the wrong, it's the sin in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what's right, but I can't. I want to do what's good, but I don't. I don't want to do what's wrong. But I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing the wrong. It's the sin living in me that does it. I've discovered this principle of life. That when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what's wrong. I love God's law with all of my heart. But there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. The power that makes me a slave to sin is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Can you say amen to the word? Amen. Friend, the answer to change this year is not another state of mind. The answer is in Jesus. It's not another resolution, another goal, another idea. The answer for your life, the answer for my life is found in Jesus. You don't have to keep carrying that baggage around. You don't have to keep being the way you've been. You don't have to keep living the life you've lived. You can see change, but it won't happen just because you make your mind up to it. Because Paul said, the thing I try to do in my natural, I can't do it. I keep trying to figure it out. I keep trying to make myself behave, and I don't make myself behave. I try to make myself be disciplined, but I can't seem to be disciplined enough. But he said, who will, who will uh, help me to escape this misery? And I would tell you today, the world is in a place of misery. That's why they look for another drink. That's why they look for another relationship. That's why I've got to have another career. I've got to have another joint. I've got to have another this. I've got to have another that to help me get over it. They're in a miserable state. And listen, without Jesus Christ, friend, that's where you and I are always going to be, is in a place of difficulty. But in the middle of that, Paul said, in the middle of my misery, in the middle of my circumstances, there is an answer, and his name is Jesus. Listen, friend, it's not left to what I can't do. It's left to what he he can do in me. There's an answer for my life. There's an answer for your life. And his name is Jesus. This morning, I want to share with you three things this morning. Three things as we walk through change. Three things as we see God perfect his purpose in us. And it's this, first of all, friend, that thing that's held us back, we've got to yield it to Jesus. We've got to yield it to Jesus. Now, I know in the church world often we have phrases that we say, and sometimes not everybody knows what we're talking about. Sometimes we say phrases and we couldn't explain it ourselves. I want to tell you, somebody may say, well, what does that mean to yield it to Jesus? Yielding it to Jesus, friend, just simply says, you know what? I've tried this on my own, and I can't do it, Lord. I can't do this by myself. I can't get it figured out on my own. Listen, friend, if you could figure it out on your own, you wouldn't be where you're at today. If you could have figured it out, you'd have quit it a long time ago. If you could have handled worry on your own, you'd have left worry in the dust a long time ago. Listen, friend, this is about us being real. 
It's about being vulnerable before God. You know, you and I live with the challenge to be something that we feel others would have us to be. What they see is, you know what, we have that thing always going on. You say, you know, well, I see those things in my life, and if, if I could just be like so-and-so, you know, if I could be like Phil, then I could have it all down. If I could be like Helen, man, I'd have it all together. Sometimes people look at us and they don't see the struggles that you walk through. They don't see the trials you walk through. They don't see the difficulties you walk through. They say, well, you know what? If I could just be like them, then I'd have it all together. You know, if I could behave like Kenan, then I could do it. If I could just be like so-and-so, then, man, all these problems will go away. Let me tell you something. It's time we get real with God. How many of you know, there's not, all, there's not any of us in this room that's got it all together. Yeah, it's quiet in the house this morning. How many of you know in the house this morning, we don't have it all together? There's some things you hit on all cylinders, and some cylinders you don't even know they're even there. We have difficulty sometimes. We need to be real. The truth is, we kind of live our lives sometimes and we think we need to approach God by the way others view ourselves. But we just need to be real before God and say, Lord, no matter what anybody else thinks, no matter what they think I should be, Lord, here's where I am today. Here's where I am today. Lord, this is what's going on in my life. This is a struggle that I'm facing. This is a trial I'm walking through. And Lord, in you, I don't want to walk through this again. I don't want to carry this thing forward. You know, it may have been in my family for years, but in Jesus' name, I'm not going to carry this thing forward in my life or for my kids. It's time for a change. It's time for a break. We've got to yield that thing to Jesus. Let me tell you something, friend. He saved you flaws and all. He saved you with your personality and your traits just as they are. He saved you. Why? Because he loves you and he cares for you. And let me declare to you this today. If there's anybody who believes in you, knowing you like he does, it's God. He knows it when I'm hitting all cylinders and when I'm not. And he loves me. In the process. Listen, friend, it's not just another change of mind that we need. It's not another four-step program. It's not another New Year's resolution. It's coming to the place where we finally get real and we simply say, you know what? I don't have the answers to this and I don't know how to accomplish this on my own because I've been trying, I've been putting efforts in, I've been doing, and it's simply not working. Paul said, I can't make myself do right. I want to, but I can't. He said, I don't have in my own self what it takes. I'm tired of losing the battle. I'm tired of not walking free from this this area. I'm tired of coming forth like a victim instead of a victor. But in the middle of that frustration, thank God he doesn't leave it there because that would be hopelessness. But in the midst of it, he says there is an answer and his name is Jesus. Listen, friend, he's not just a religious figure. He's the son of God. He's not just a good man. He's the savior of the world. He's not just a good teacher or a prophet. He is the healer. He's the restorer. He's the one who can do anything. He's the one with whom nothing is impossible. Jesus Christ was the answer, still is the answer, and will always be the answer. I can't do it on my own, but I've heard that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can't break from this thing on my own strength, but I've heard that in all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me and called me according to his purpose. Yielding that area to him means you let go of the lie, the lie that says, I'll never be free from this. Jesus says Satan was a liar and the father of all lies. Satan doesn't want you and I to walk in freedom. He wants to keep us leashed to old things, old ways of thinking, old ways of doing. He wants you to keep preoccupied with that area of bondage so that you won't think about how good freedom really is. 
I'm reminded that Jesus said in John 8 and 32, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth today is that in Jesus Christ, friend, you can be free. Paul said the answer is in Jesus. So you got to yield that thing to him. Listen, how many of y'all in your life have ever went on a diet? I have. I think I have lived continually on a diet all my life. I lose weight, I gain weight. I lose weight, I gain weight. I lose weight, I gain weight. I lose, I mean, I'll, you, you, got, to, you got to understand how my thinking is. I, if I'm going to do it, then, man, we've got to do it hook, line, and sinker. And I've got the counter out on the phone, and so I'm scanning everything I eat. And I'm putting it all in. At the end of the day, I know how many calories, and I know how much protein. I mean, I, I've got it all down. And so then I'm losing weight and I'm watching things go and I get to the weight I want to be. And, and then Paula says, you want to go to Ivanhoe's and get some fries and a cheeseburger? And, okay, now they ain't no skin. You can't scan that. <laughs> that, that. That shake, you can't scan that shake. You know, all it says is error, 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 error. <laughs> And it's not long until I say, yeah, yeah, I'll eat that. Well, okay. Well, you want to go? We got hooked on this restaurant called Chewy's. I'm pretty sure they're going to cater the marriage supper of the lamb. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Man, it is so good. If you like Mexican food, it is so good. There's one problem, though. You go to Chewy's. And <laughs> it's kind of ironic that's their name because that's all I do while I'm there. It's kind of like they bring out these chips and incredible salsa in this dip. And I said, and it's kind of like putting the feed bag on. I mean, it's like, I look at Paul, I'm just like, I can't stop. I can't stop myself. It's like the only way I will stop is you got to take these chips and get them off the table. Now, listen, the point is this. I've tried it in myself and I failed. Well, this week. Here's what I'm going to do. And then somebody will say, hey, y'all want to go lunch? Oh, yes, I want to go lunch. <laughs> and you get there and you think, oh, I'm going to have a salad. <laughs> salad never tastes as good as pizza or burritos or tacos or spaghetti. Salad, salad, that's what rabbits eat. <laughs> <laughs> and in myself, I think I can do this. And I get there and I, I how many areas of our lives do we try to nail down and we say, I got this thing. I can change this attitude. You know what? If I'll just, I'm going to pull myself up by the bootstraps and I'm going to get a hold of this habit. I'm going to get a hold of this thing in my life and I'm going to bring it to resolve once and for all. Listen, forget it. You came to church to hear a good word. The word is forget it. Because you are trying to change things on a supernatural level, and you can't do that in the natural. You can't do it in yourself. It's not a change of mind. It's not a change of behavior. It's not about putting four points and a poem on the front of the refrigerator and getting yourself through the day. It's about, I've got a problem, and I can't deal with this on my own. So what do we do? we got to yield that thing to Jesus. Listen, listen. Stop fight. Stop having every year that you just keep carrying it over. How about 2018? We just stop. Forget about it and yield. Stop trying to do it on your own and yield that thing to Jesus. Not only do we need to yield it to him, but friend, I would declare to you this today. We need to set a new direction for our life. I'll tell you today, this gospel that you and I believe, this gospel of the book, it's a gospel of hope because he is the God of all hope. He is the God of second chances. He's the God of new beginning and new seasons. 
He's the God of the impossible and the incredible. We are going to celebrate Martin Luther King Day tomorrow. Martin Luther King Jr. stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and declared some words that are still echoing in 2018. He said four words. I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream to see things different than they are today. I have a dream to see my life different than my life is today. I have a dream that goes beyond my present circumstances. I have a dream that goes beyond my situations today. I have a dream. I see things the way they can be, not the way they are. I would challenge you and I would double back on that and I would dare you today to dream in Jesus. I dare you to dream according to his ability to work in your life. Friend, you need to set a new direction for your life. Start looking ahead. Paul said in Philippians 3, forgetting what is behind me and looking to what is ahead of me, I press on. It's time for us to stop trying to navigate through life looking in the rearview mirror. And look at what is ahead of us. You know, one of the ways the enemy keeps people bound is he convinces them they'll never go free. He tries to discourage them enough. Listen to me. This is for somebody today. He tries to discourage you enough that you lose sight of the dream. You don't even feel like you can dream anymore. Circus, they tell us that one of the ways that they train, you know, when you go to the circus and you see those enormous elephants come in. I'm always amazed how this enormous element, uh, elephant is trained and led around by such a little person. What they tell us is this. They take that elephant when it's very young and they'll put a leash on one of its legs. When that elephant starts to move, they pull back on the leash and they pull back on the leash and pull back on the leash and day after day, month after month, and year after year, they continue to pull on that leash. As the elephant grows and time goes on, they don't remove the leash for a while. They just keep expanding it so it will fit the elephant's current state. But there comes a day when the trainer will take that leash off of that elephant's leg. And the reality is that elephant has walked in bondage all its life, and that's all it knows. And so now, it doesn't need a leash. It just walks according to what's always been. So it never takes time to run off. Because in its mind, it still has a leash on it. In its mind, it's always going to be the way it's always been. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now over these people. God, I pray you give them a new dream today. I pray you'll give them a dream to see what you can do in their life. I pray, God, you'll give them a dream that what you can do in their marriage. I pray you'll give them a new dream, God, for what you can do in their home. I pray, God, you'll give them a new dream for their life. Father, it's in you. Lord, we need a dream, and you're the dream giver. In Jesus' name. Friend, you've got to set a new direction for your life. You can't keep going the way you're going. You've got to set a new direction. It's time to start asking the question, what changes does God have for me in 2018? What does God want to do in me? And through me in my future. Friend, you've got to set a new direction. Last of all, this morning, I would tell you this. These things won't work unless you set some new priorities. Now, we talked a little bit last Sunday about some priorities. I want to ask you again today. What is your life's 
priority. What is your life's priority? What's the number one thing in your life? For some people say, well, it's to work, it's to build up retirement, and one day to retire. I have a friend of mine, every time I see him, he talks about how much closer he is to retirement. He's been working for years. He has been so saturated. He has built his life on one day getting to retire. I want to ask you what the priority of your life is. What's the number one thing? If you had to lay everything else down and if everything else had to go its way, what would be the number one thing still standing in your life? Now listen, I know we're in church and I know in church you give all the right answers. I'm asking for you to be real today. Listen, when you look at your life, your life will tell what your priorities are. Jesus said these words in Matthew 6 and verse 33. Seek first. Somebody say first. first. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added to you. We sometimes get that verse confused and we start living by life's version of 6.33. It says seek first the things. Then if you have time, seek Christ. Let me ask you this question. What might happen in 2018 if you put God first in every phase of your life? If you gave God the first day of every week, if you gave God the first moments of every day, if you gave him the first part of all the things he's blessed you with, what do you think, friend, might happen in our marriages, in our families, in our homes, in our own life, if we were to put Christ first? We're talking about priorities. Listen, friend, you and I have a purpose, and we have a reason for being. I don't have time to be tied down to things. I don't have time to be like that elephant, still leashed by old things. It's time. It's a new season. It's a new creation. It's a new day in your life and in my life. It's time that we're the people he's created us to be. It's time. Listen, friend, it's time to be the church. It's time to set new priorities. Not just be content to coast through life, but to live life with new purpose and priority. If you want to live free, friend, you're going to have to set some new priorities. You can't keep living the way you're living and expect to walk in freedom. Remember Paul's words. Paul said, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated, but there's an answer, and it's in Jesus. It's time to make Christ the priority of our lives. And friend, I would declare for you today, I don't know where all the parts of your life may be, but I can tell you this, you can get a New Year's resolution, you can get a new plan, you can get all kinds of new things. But there's nothing more important in my life in 2018 than my relationship with Jesus. And you've walked into this church today. I don't know what's going on in your life. You know, there's a lot of people who come here that say, you know what, I'm here today because I told my wife or I told my husband, we need to get back in church. Friend, that's a great, great plan for 2018. But listen, just getting back in the church won't bring change. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the only one that can change my life and your life. Jesus is the only one that can give you hope beyond your, your, your present circumstances. If we're going to see change, it's only going to come through Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads this morning?
Dear Father, today I call upon you in prayer. Father, today I pray for the men and women and young people in this room today. Father, you know our lives. You know everything about us. You know the things we face. You know the things we walk through. You know the things we're struggling with. You know the setbacks. God, you know the thing that is attached to our life, kind of like that leash is with that elephant, the thing that just always seems to be there. And through the different stages of our life, it continues to be there. Seems like we never quite get free from that thing. Father, I pray for them today. In Jesus' name, I pray for people that in this room, they're dealing with despair and hopelessness. Friend, there is an answer, and his name is Jesus. Father, I pray for those today who have had great difficulty in dreaming because they're so discouraged by the past. God, you are the giver of dreams. Would you help them to dream? Would you give them a new dream today? Father, when they've looked back over their life and they see disappointments, they times they've tried and they've had good intention, but the good intention wasn't enough to carry them through and never came to fruition. Lord, even in this part of relationship with you, Lord, I can't do it on my own. I need you. I just need you. Lord, I need you to help me to overcome these habits. I need you to help me overcome fear and worry and anxieties. Lord, I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Father, today as we are in this building, well, sometimes we can cover those things up and make everybody think everything's okay. When it's not always okay. Lord, you see our struggles. You see the things we wish we could improve. It just doesn't seem like they're improving. Father, help us dream again. Would you? Help us dream again. Help us see things as they could be, not as they are today. Help us to see things different in light of you. God, give us new dreams, I pray. In Jesus' name. Friends, would you keep your heads bowed for just a few moments? I'd like to ask you today, as you walked into this church... And you, along with me, you stand at the beginning of a new year and you say, you know what, Pastor, there's some things I don't want to carry over to 2018 that I need God's help with. And I want to see change, change in my life in 2018. Friend, if that's you, would you just lift your hand up right where you're at? Yes. 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 Okay, just keep raising your hand if that's you. Yep, that's me. There's some things that I'm struggling with. Thank you, friend. You can put your hand down. Are there others? You would join these that have already raised their hand and say, yeah, that's me. I don't want to carry those things forward in 2018. Yes. 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 Oh, God. Would you help us today? Would you help us today? God, we need you right now in this moment. God, you know that struggle. You, for each person, you see the struggle. 
But we're tired of struggling. We're tired of trying to do it in our own strength. We're tired of trying to do it in our own way. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray today for freedom in Jesus' name. I pray for freedom in Jesus' name. Freedom in Jesus' name. Freedom in Jesus' name. Freedom in Jesus' name. Friend, if that's you, you've raised your hand just between you and him. Just begin to say, Lord, I need your freedom. Lord, I need your freedom. I need your freedom. I need your freedom in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just quietly, right where you're seated. Right where you're seated. Father, right now in this moment, I just welcome you. Lord, I know your presence is right here in this room with us, right in this very moment. And Lord, you know each person that's lifted a hand. God, you see the struggle that's been there. Jesus, I declare over you, you've only been hearing bondage and you've only been hearing I'm never going to win in this area. In the name of Jesus, I declare over you freedom in Jesus' name. I declare that your future will not be as your past has been. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that he that the Son sets free is free indeed. That's why you can't do it on your own, friend. That's why I can't do it alone. The Son has to set us free. In the name of Jesus, may every stronghold be broken in Jesus' name. I curse the spirit of bondage. Hmm. I curse in Jesus' name the leash that's attached itself to them. Jesus' name. May you be free by the power of Jesus Christ. May you be free today by the power of God's Son, Jesus Christ. I declare over you today that you are not what you used to be, but you are everything He's created you to be. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray today for the discouraged. I pray for those who have lost sight of dreaming and hope. I pray today for those who are just going through the motions of life, trying to keep the boat from rocking. Jesus' name, Father, I pray in Jesus' name, give them a new dream today, God. God, would you plant the seed of the dream inside of them? God, they may have fallen down ten times. Lord, would you lift them back up today? Father, in Jesus' name, strengthen those who are tired and weary on the inside. Their sense of fight has gone. In Jesus' name, may it be renewed in your spirit again. Father, we can't do this on our own. It's in this moment right now, Lord, we just yield it to you. Friend, right now, right where you're at, just begin to give that thing to him. Whatever it is, if it's worry, fear, habits, whatever. Lord, I give it to you right now. I give it to you, Lord. I give it to you. Father, in Jesus' name, we give it to you. We yield that thing to you right now in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus name we yield that to you we yield every year we yield every year that has been bondage we yield every month we yield every frustrating moment that we felt like, Paul, I want to do it, but it seems like I can't. We yield it to you. We yield it to you. In Jesus' name. Lord, would you take it? Can't do it on our own anymore. But in you, Lord, I believe. I believe there's hope for tomorrow. I believe there's strength for tomorrow. And fresh direction in you. Father, right now in this moment as we, our hearts are quiet before you. i got to ask you to do something brand new on the inside of people. Lord, you said the word change. Would you begin to bring about change? Change. A new season. New dawning, fresh start. God, would you bring about change? Lord, I ask it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Would you stand with me this morning? doing in your heart this morning, but I can tell you, he's doing something. Last service, we had people come around. We prayed for people around the altars. I just felt prompted in my spirit this morning. I needed to be quiet, be still, and let him. Listen, you're not going to get your answer through me. You're going to get your answer through him. You're not going to get your answer through anybody else. It's going to come. And sometimes, sometimes it's not the loud things. Sometimes it's not the flamboyant things. Sometimes it's in a still, small voice. Would you just quietly, would you say across the room, I receive. Lord, we receive right now. We receive all that you have for us. We receive all of your promises we receive the plan that you have for our lives we receive from you today strength we receive from you today new dreams new vision new starts freedom freedom We're no longer going to be a slave to fear. We're no longer going to be a slave to worry. We're no longer going to be a slave to old things. In Jesus' name, we're going to walk in the plan, the purpose you have for us. Change. Change, Lord, is your word. Change is your word for us. Change in Jesus' name. Father, as we have yielded that to you today and we began to set a new direction, help us to live like free people. Help us to live like the people you've created us to be. Help us to set new priorities in line of what you've done for us today. Lord, going into this new year, we need you. We need you more than we've ever needed you before pray you'll be with us. Father, I thank you today for what you've done in the hearts of men and women all across this room today. I thank you that you know them by name. I thank you that you love them and that you care for them. So Lord, today, would you cause your face to shine upon them? Father, would You bring fresh blessing because I know your mercies are fresh and new every day. Fresh blessings into their life today. 
May they walk in your incredible love. And may every day, may they be reminded of how precious they are in your sight. Love them, Lord, with an everlasting love, I pray. Fulfill everything you desperate. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, not one person in this room will miss one thing that you have planned for them this year. Everything you have purposed for them, may it be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. And the church said in agreement, amen, amen, amen. Friends, 18 doesn't have to be like 17. 18 doesn't have to be like the last decade. In Jesus' name, change can come. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his countenance always shine upon you. And may you always know the depth of his love. And may the joy of the Lord always be your strength. We love each of you. Pray God's hand upon you. Have a great week. And may his strength be yours. God bless you.